Hello, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me in this tutorial. Um, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks, and I'm so happy we're spending this time together. Um, we are going to make this snowman and snowball wreath, and it's absolutely beautiful. It turned out lovely, and I'm so, so pleased with it. Um, we're going to use our 12 peg loom, and we're going to use Bernat. I used Bernat Premium yarn in white, red, and green, but I would suggest you use something that's maybe a little bit coarser, maybe like a Craft Smart yarn. Um, Bernat Premium is a four weight yarn, but if you find another four weight yarn that's a little bit coarser, I think that um, that uh, you'll see less of the fiber fill through the through the project, or double strand your your yarn, um, or use a five weight yarn, or just use what I used because it turned out beautiful as well. So. Um, we're going to, to go ahead and make this together, and I hope you enjoy this project as much as I have enjoyed doing it. Um, please don't forget to hit that like and the subscribe. Those are two things that if you do for me, I would just really, really, really appreciate it. So thank you, my friends, for joining me. Um, go ahead and get your supplies and have a lot of fun as you make this project, and please show me in my Facebook group. All right, friends, so if you're ready, we are going to get started with our little snowman. We are going to do a drawstring cast on, on our 12 peg little loom. So cute. Okay, so we're going to do a slip knot. We're gonna put that on our anchor peg, just like that. Just uh, put a knot around there. It helps you um, hold your yarn in place, okay? Then we're gonna go behind peg one, in front of peg two, behind, in front, behind, in front, behind, in front, all the way around. And I'm not putting pressure on my yarn or tension on my yarn. I'm just uh, weaving it just gently as it slips through my fingers, okay? Now, this is peg one. We're gonna go behind peg one. And we're just gonna pause for a second and we're gonna pull these down. So push them down just like that, okay? This is peg one. We're behind peg one. We're gonna now wrap all across the top of every other peg, just like this. This is our drawstring cast on, okay? I like to wrap this around peg one there and then I grab it with my hand, my finger, just like that to hold it secure. But we're gonna work on the last peg. Oops, forgot to take off that little plastic thing. There we go. We're going to go underneath that bottom loop over top of the top loop and over the peg. Now I can let go of this because it's secure, okay? Then we're gonna go around to every peg that has two loops on it and we're gonna knit off from the bottom over the top one, over the top of the peg, okay? So pick up that loop that's underneath, go over top of that top loop and over your peg, just like this. This is a drawstring cast on. It will allow us to tighten the bottom of our project or the top, whichever this becomes, um, and you can drawstring it closed, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're going to, I do not count my, my cast on row, so we're going to now e-wrap this next part. So. Um, we're going to go behind and in front of peg one. I almost started on peg two. This one has nothing on it right now, and that's okay. So we've got one loop on there. Then we're gonna go to our second peg, behind, in front, and around. Behind, in front, and around. All the way around our loom, okay? Just like this. It's called an E-wrap, okay? Then I just put this over that first peg and grab it with my hands, just with my fingers, just to hold it in place so I can knit this one off. This is a new loom. I don't like it as much as my old loom. Seems like it's a, got a little bit wider of, an, of a tip for some reason, okay? So we're going to then take the bottom loop over the top and we're going to knit off. And once this row's done, I'm gonna find my old faithful <laughs> loom pick because I don't like the feel of this one. I don't know why. It's funny that there's a difference. I'll just have to get used to it, okay? So that's row one. You're going to mark it off on your paper or if you have a row counter, you're going to reset it and click row one. I always mark off the rows that I've completed, not the rows that I'm working on. When I, If you check out my channel, you'll see that I do a lot of Addy um, knitting on the circular knitting machine. And I always like to count the rows that I'm working on when I'm using that machine. But when I'm loom knitting, I do it the, the opposite. I um, count it when I'm finished. So now we're going to go to peg one, E-wrap, E-wrap all the way around. Just like what we had done before, making sure you have some slack coming out of your ball, just like this, okay? We're gonna e-wrap all the way around. Then again, I put that in front of peg one just so that I can grab it and hold it. And then we're gonna knit off this row and then I'm gonna show you the difference between the two picks, okay? And then we're gonna pick up that bottom loop, put it over the top and over your peg. 
just like this. Okay, we're gonna knit off our second row. You can um, double thickness this if you like, if you wanna use two strands of yarn. Then the, um, the, the holes between each of the rows of knitting won't be quite so wide. Um, we're gonna stuff this little this little guy and um, I don't like to see the stuffing. I'm gonna mark this first. I don't like to see the stuffing through my piece but in this one it's unavoidable um, because I wanted the shape to be nice and kind of plumpy. So I can see the stuffing through through the piece but um, I'm okay with it on this project. I think it looks I think it looks nice actually. So um, it, you can use a double strand of yarn which will make those those little loops those little holes a little less um, visible but um, I'm going to go ahead and continue this whole project with one strand. Now look at the difference between these two. If I can hold them there. My, the one that I'm used to is a little bit shorter and it's pointier. I like it much better. Okay, <laughs> So we've knitted two rows of EROP and we're going to keep going. Pushing these down as the, the previous row down. EROPing all the pegs, just like this, very easy to do. Around the front of that first one, hold it with my fingers, knit off. And we're going to do this for 16 rows, okay? So you keep going, it doesn't matter if you go under the loop like this to pick it up and pull it over, or if you go over top of it like this, either way works. And it doesn't change the look of your work, okay? I just prefer going underneath like this and over. I'm gonna push that row down. I'm gonna mark off row three on my counter. This time I can release my anchor peg, okay? Just because we don't want it pulling as your project grows. I take that knot out right away. And this is pretty long, I don't need it that long, but we're gonna just leave it for now, okay? All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna wrap row four. Just like so. Pushing those down a little further. In front of peg one, grab it with my finger there, knit off, then I can let it go. And I'm going to continue this process until I have 16 rows of e-wrapped stitches, okay? So you go ahead and finish. And when you get to row 16, I will see you back. Have fun, my friends. Grab yourself a coffee and a cookie or <laughs> something to snack on and, and uh, Enjoy the process and I'll see you soon. All right, finished row 16. It's looking beautiful, love it. Okay, now what you're gonna do is you're going to wrap your yarn around one and a half times and cut it off, okay? That will give us a long enough tail to um, remove our project. What we're gonna do is we're going, This it's coming out from behind the last peg. I'm gonna move it in between the first and the last and then underneath the loop of the last peg. You're gonna take your loom hook and you're going to pick up that yarn and pull it through, okay? Then you're gonna take this across to the next one and I've already moved these stitches halfway down just so it's easier to get out, okay? Or part way down. You're gonna go under the top loop, scoop up that yarn tail, bring it through, okay? We're going to go under, scoop it up and bring it through. Go to the next peg, do the same thing. And the next one, and we wanna put some slack on this um, you could go right around the whole loom like this before you remove any of the pegs and any of the stitches off the pegs, but I always do about five or six. Then we're going to leave that first one on because I'm going to go back and redo that one, okay? And we're going to take off um, these two and I always leave one next to the last one that I just did as well. Just it makes it easier, okay? And then we're going to just take off a few more. We're not taking them off. We're working the stitch to get that yarn tail through it so that we can gather it at the end, okay? Just like so. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna take a few more off. I'm gonna leave this one, it's next to that one, otherwise it makes it too loose, okay? And then we're gonna finish this off. It's only 12 pegs, it doesn't take long, okay? That's the peg one. I'm gonna go back because I, I, I don't want a little gap here, so I'm gonna close it off by going back under the last peg just like this, okay? And then we can remove our last stitches from our loom. And there you go. 
got your project off. Okay, you're gonna give it a little stretch just to line up all those stitches and make it perfect. Don't pull too hard because it's a delicate piece, okay? And we're going to grab our stuffing and we're going to stuff it. All right, so we're gonna take our little piece and we're gonna close one end. Doesn't matter which one. Make sure that you just smooth out that, that top so that you don't have it all bunched up. And you're going to put it on your needle. And we're just going to reinforce it around once. So just go around the top row of those stitches just like that. Pick them up with your needle. And we're just going to reinforce it just once, just like that, okay? Then what you're going to do is you're going to tie off a little knot. Just grab one strand there. Tie off your knot. Push that down with your thumb. I always double knot it, so I'm going to do it again. Oops, wants to snag on me. And pull that down with your thumb. Then I'm going to stick my fingers in there. Put this through that center hole. And I'm going to pull that knot into the inside of the work, okay? You heard that. Maybe you didn't, but you could have heard that snap, and my knot is on the inside now, and that's what I want. I'm going to cut this off. Throw that away. And now we can begin to stuff. Okay, so you see what I mean, how these, these stitches are so um, loose, okay, uh, that you see in between. But for this project, I am just not going to worry about it because I think... Uh, I think it looks great actually. I've already got most of my snowmen. This is my last one on my uh, project and I love how it looks. So, but generally, if, if you know me from my Addy knitting videos, you'll know that I do not like when you can see the stuffing through. Um, but we're going to, we're going to just get out of my box <laughs> and out of my uh, <laughs> old ways and we're going to do it because it actually looks nice I think for this project it looks nice and you can you can even use like this is Bernat Premium um, and it is a, a softer finer yarn um, but you can use Craft Smart yarn ones that you like again if you follow my Addy knitting you'll know that Craft Smart yarn does not work on our machines very well but um it works great for this project. I just don't happen to have it in any. So um, because it's a coarser yarn, it's still a four weight yarn, but it's a little bit thicker. Um, you might want to try using that instead. Um, and you'll get a little bit tighter stitch in here, okay? Because it's thicker, okay? So I went ahead and I just went around once. We're going to tie off a knot. And one more. And then we're gonna put that down through the center hole and out. That's okay. Okay, then we're gonna cut that off. I'm gonna work your little snowman, make them nice and even. Okay. I can see that the stitches are a little bit closer on this side, so that's where I'm gonna put my front. And you can do that. Um, Work around it, and if you see one that one side that looks a little bit nicer than the other side, that will be your front, okay? So put this little guy aside. Doesn't look like much right now, but put him aside. Grab your yarn that you want to use for your hat and your scarf, and, um, and see me back with your 12-peg loom, okay? I'm going to use the green for this particular little one. All right, so I have my green. I'm going to tie... Leave a lot, little bit longer tail for this one because you're going to use this end to sew it onto your head. Okay, so make make your tail a little bit longer than you normally would. Okay, and I'm going to attach that to my anchor peg, and we're going to do an e wrap cast on. So I'm going to go behind and in front of that first peg, like that, and e wrap all the way around. Okay, again, I'm not putting um, lots of tension on my yarn. I'm just letting it slip through my fingers. Just as it will. There we've e-wrapped one time all the way around. We're going to push those stitches down and now we're going to go in front of peg one. We're going to e-wrap again all the way around the second time. This is our cast on row. Okay, so knit off all of your, your pegs and we're going to do a knit purl row, okay? Actually more than one row, because we're going to do a bit of a, 
a, a brim, okay? Just to give it a little bit of um, detail. You can do the solid e-wrap if you like, but I think um, if you have a chance to do a little bit of attention to detail, then it always makes your project a little look a little bit nicer. So that is what we're going to do. We are going to e-wrap peg one and knit it off. We are going to purl peg two. So you're gonna take your yarn end, you're going to go underneath that stitch, that second on the second peg, you're going to put your hook under the top of the of the loop that's on top and scoop up that yarn, pull it up into a loop, take the whole thing off your peg, put that loop back on. That is a purl. We're gonna e-wrap that next stitch, just like this, and we're gonna purl the next. So put your yarn underneath the loop, put your hook above that top loop, scoop up the bottom loop, and you've got another little loop just like that. Pull the one off your peg and put that new loop onto your peg and then pull it to secure, okay? That is our second um, purl. So we've done a knit purl, knit purl. We're gonna do that same pattern all the way around. So I'm gonna knit this one. I'm gonna purl this one. Okay, knit this one, e-wrap knit, and purl the next one. Okay, just like that. E wrap and purl. Okay, and we have two more to go. We're going to e wrap and we're going to purl that last stitch. Okay, row one, mark that off on your counter. We're going to do the exact same thing for row two. E-wrap the first peg, purl the second. Pull your stitches down a bit, e-wrap the third, purl the fourth. So every odd one you're e-wrapping and knitting, every even one you are purling. Do that all the way around till you get to the end again and I'll see you back. All right, I'm purling my last one. So we've done two rows of knit purl, knit purl, knit purl. You can mark that off on your counter. We're gonna release this little anchor peg. I tied that pretty tight. There we go. Bring it through. Okay, and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna push our stitches down. And now all we do is e-wrap, okay? So we're going to e-wrap, oops, sorry. We're going to e-wrap for eight rows. So you can reset your counter to zero or just not use your counter for the first two, or you can just keep um, counting it until you get to 10 rows. But we're gonna do eight rows of just e-wrapping, okay? Knit off that last stitch. And you're going to continue around doing eight rows of e-wrap stitches. And that will bring you 10 rows in total that you've done for this little beanie. Then we are going to come back and we will cast off together. Okay? All right. Keep going, my friends. So that's row one of e-wrap. I'm going to do seven more. All right, that didn't take long, but you can see there's a little, the texture at the bottom is just a little bit different than the rest of it, and it looks beautiful. I love it. Just gives a little extra detail. Wrap your yarn around your loom one and a half times, and we're going to cast off just the same way that we did with our snowman, okay? So I'll get you started here. You're going to bring it between the last and the first peg. You're going to put it underneath that last peg, underneath the loop of the last peg, and you're going to scoop it up. You're going to go down to the next one over to the next one just like so and repeat the process just like we did before leaving that last one on but removing the others okay go around finish that off just like we did for the snowman and i'll see you back
Here we've got our little piece. So we're going to take that end. We're going to make sure that we roll this up too so it's not gathered all funny. We're going to pull this tight. I'm going to cut off this tail a bit because it doesn't need to be that long. And we're going to reinforce that top end just like we did both ends of our snowman, okay? So you're going to just go around and you're going to pick up that first row of stitches. Just like that. Tie it off. One more. Okay. Pop that end into the center of the inside of your little beanie. Pull so that that knot snaps to the inside. Cut this off. Now we are going to leave this tail because you're going to use that to sew on. But look at that. Isn't that just like the cutest little beanie? <laughs> Love it. Now I'm going to grab my clover pom-pom maker. Now this has a thir number 35 on the back. So if that uh, helps you out at all. Um, it's the smallest one in my set of four that I have. It's just so cute. Um, and I already made myself a pom-pom. Now you can go ahead and check my... Um, my channel I show you how to use the clover pom-pom makers I have a set of four different sizes again this is the smallest one um, I won't demonstrate that on this video because you can go ahead and look that up on my channel but if you don't have a clover uh, clover pom-pom maker you make it just however you normally make yours um, if you wrap it over two fingers and then um, pull up your tail through through your fingers like that to tight, tighten it off that will make one that's about this size okay I'm going to take one tail from this pom-pom and I'm going to put it through that center hole and pull it through. Oops, let go of it. Then I'm going to take the other one. And I'm going to not put it through that same hole, but just off to the side a little bit, just so that I have some yarn in between so I can tighten it, okay? I'm going to turn that inside out. I'm going to take these two tails. I'm going to tie a tight, tight knot. Then I'm going to just cut this off. Just like that. Turn it around the other way. And we have the most adorable little beanie. You know, you can make a bunch of these and um, make a little garland out of them. Wouldn't that be so cute? And have them hanging on your garland like this and oh. So cute. I, I can think of a lot of different ideas for this little beanie, actually, but we'll just rein it in and keep it for this project, okay? So put that aside. Grab your 12 peg, peg loom again, the same color of yarn you used for your beanie, and we're going to make the scarf. Okay, so we've got our loom. I've put my, my slip knot on my anchor peg, and we're going to cast on over four needles, okay? Over four um, pegs. We're going to E-wrap cast on, so behind and in front. One, two three and four. Push those down. You're going to come around peg four just like that and between it and e-wrap the opposite direction just like this. Okay. Let's knit those off. That's our cast on row. I don't count my cast on row. Okay. Now push those down and we're going to Go behind that first peg, like that, in between, behind, and in front. You might need to slow this down, okay? And, or rewind it and watch it again. I'll do the next set a little bit slower, okay? And cast off. That's row one. Mark it on your paper. So it's between the third and the fourth peg. We're going to go behind peg four, wrap it in front. And then in between those two pegs and e-wrap the other way okay just like that and knit off that's row two push them down come behind peg one and in front and then in between those two and behind and in front this is row three i'll do one more row with you and set you free Okay, and let's grab our working yarn, go behind peg four and around, in between those two and around. This is row four. You continue that process until you've knit 22 rows, okay? 
So that's row four. I'm going to go mark that so that I don't, uh, I don't um, forget if I have to get up. And it's coming out the bottom there. It's going to look great. We knit four rows. You're going to go ahead, do 22 in total, and I'll see you back when you're done. All right, that didn't take long, did it? We're going to cut off a tail. I might have cut this one off a little too short, but I'm going to make it work. And then we're going to wrap it around peg one, and we're going to cast off just like we did on those um, other parts of the project that we did, okay? And four. Nope, I had plenty. Okay, now you can remove your stitches from your pegs. Just like so. Put your loom aside. You're going to pull on the both ends just like that. Okay, and this just automatically curls inside of itself because it's only over four pegs. We're going to let it curl and this is going to go against the body, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to hide our yarn tails. I'm just going to pick up a few stitches here on the inside. Bring it through. Not pulling to gather the end. I just want to, um, like I don't want to pull it so that this scrunches in. I want to keep it flat. Then I'm going to just go up. I'm just picking up a few stitches on the inside there. Okay. And I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to do it to the other side and I'll see you back. All right, friends. So the looming work is done. I'm going to put those aside. Okay. And we're going to grab our little pieces here. <laughs> so cute you know you follow the video for the first time and it takes a while but once you once you make one set you can whip these off like nobody's business um I this is the last one that I need for the project and I saved it for the video but I did seven more and um I would like I watched a movie and I got them all done so <laughs> you just assembly line do do um eight of these eight of the scarves and eight eight hats and you are ready to assemble okay so we're going to just um eyeball halfway down okay you don't even have to count it just eyeball halfway down and then you're going to pick up half of each row each stitch in in the row okay and just weave it in and out just like this okay all the way around till we get to the beginning as usual I cut off way too long I'm gonna snip this off just because it's easier to work with. You're going to take your yarn tail and you're going to just cinch it in. Don't cinch it like so tight that you have no neck there, okay? Just so that you can see the indent there. Then tie it off in a knot and another one. And we're going to hide this into our work. However, you could just snip it off if you like because you're gonna cover it with a scarf. But I, you know, I'm just going to do it the way I normally do it in through there, pull it, cut it, and there we go, squish that up just a little bit to shape it good. Then we're going to take our scarf, we're going to have the seam where, where it un, unrolls here against the body. We're going to bring that over that neck and we're going to stretch it in the back so that we have it a little bit longer and it keeps that tight shape, okay? Then you're going to go ahead and you're going to put a piece of yarn, the color of your scarf, onto your needle, just like that. Again, I wanna make sure that this is fairly tight around the neck so it holds that shape. Cross it over, then I'm just gonna go right down through both halves of the scarf into the snowman, pick up, go underneath that um, stuffing. I'm gonna bring it through, then I'm gonna just Tie a knot, just like that. So simple to do. So, so simple to do, okay? And we're gonna tie a good strong knot. I'm gonna cut this off so it's easier to work with. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hide this. But I'm gonna be careful to hide it underneath where the scarf is, okay? So I'm gonna go into there and hide it up into the scarf there so that the color matches the color and it's not peeking through the white snowman, okay? Attention to detail means everything. There we go. Starting to look better, isn't he? Okay. Now you're going to take your beanie. <laughs> you're going to put it on that little head. Oh, I just love this little guy. So cute. Okay. You're going to make sure that it goes down near the scarf in the back and angles up for the face. Okay. So that the angle is centered where your cross is on your scarf. You're going to take that tail that I asked you to keep a little bit longer. 
and you're simply going to go into one row through the stuffing into the next row you don't even have to do every row you just want to get this on don't pull this though because i don't want this to be gathered i just want it to be nice and oh was i off the camera nice and loose on the head okay I mean, I want I want this rim to be close to the head, but if I pull this, I'm going to gather in here and it's going to look funny. So you just want to be gentle. It's coming all the way around. Just like that. You're going to then go ahead and tie off at the back of the, of the head there. Tie off into a double knot. Oop, I lost it. There we go. And then we're going to hide it. Okay, so up into the head. Just like that. Snip it off. Fix that. <laughs> oh, I love these little guys. Now we need one more piece of green yarn to sew this down. Okay, so grab yourself one that's long enough that you can um, work easily with it. And I'll see you right back. Okay, friends, so here's all I do. This is where my cross is in the scarf. This is the front of the head. I'm going to take this, pull it up just a little bit, then bring it down so it's right on the side of the head. A little bit closer to the front than to the middle, okay? Then I'm just going to take my yarn, go close to the pom-pom, go into the head, so underneath all those layers, into the head, and come out just like that, okay? I'm going to take these two yarn tails, and you got it. It's simple. We're just going to tie a firm knot, and again... Just like that. <laughs> oh, I love crafting. Don't you just love crafting? It's so much fun. And when they turn out so dang cute, it's just so rewarding, okay? Put that on your needle. We're going to hide it back up into the green. Out the top of the head. Snip it off. And that is like turning out so adorable. Now all we got to do is the face. And don't fret. It's so easy. So stick with me. All right, so here's my little guy. I've threaded my needle with just regular sewing thread, double strand, okay? I bought these little eyes, this little package of eyes on Amazon. I was going to um, reorder some that had this little screw thing at the back, and I saw these and I thought, I feel more comfortable with these when I'm making kids' toys um, because what they are, I'll show you a bigger one. They're your mushroom eye, but they have... A loop they're like a button so you can sew them on they're not going to come off and they come in all these sizes um, again they're on Amazon so you can just um, search for button mushroom eyes um, and buy this little pack now I had said when I was doing a project on my Addy knitting machine that I wouldn't buy them in this case again because there's so many of these little ones that I didn't think I would use um, but then I thought of this project and these are perfect for um, these little guys so i'm i'm yeah i'm telling you go buy this one okay it's only like 14 dollars, so it's cheap okay so we're going to come in the side of the face here's where my my um cross is here okay so i'm going to choose i'm going to put one row in the middle and i'm going to choose the rows on the out on either side of the middle row and i'm going to come up this middle here and i'm going to just go through that stitch Bring that yarn through, and that yarn can go right through, that tail can go right through into the stuffing. I just um, am going to tie the knot here, okay? Because it's white, you don't see it, but you just want to make sure that um, you don't get a knot in it as you do it, okay? So I'm going to just knot that right there onto that little piece. Then I'm going to take one of these little eyes with the little button eyes, and I'm going to string it onto my needle there and go through that eye and come up where the other eye is going to be. This is double stranded and this is going to be on a wreath. It's not a toy, so I don't need to I don't need to um, reinforce it, but you can if you want to. Then I'm going to take another little one. Okay. String it onto my needle. It's going to go in this slot, so I'm going to come back out to the side here. Oops, I caught my green hat, so I don't want to do that. Just like that. And as I pull that, it tightens it into place. <laughs> and there you have it. 
If you don't want to sew them on, you could hot glue gun them, but I don't like to see little strands of glue, so I think this is the best way to do it. And you can reinforce it again if you like, but I really don't think you need to. It's not going to go anywhere, okay? Unless you find it's not tight enough. This one actually, I think I got too loose, so I'm going to go back in there. The beauty of this white thread is you do not see it. So now I'm going to just take back what I just said. I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to tighten this one. Oh, I keep thinking I'm going off camera, and if I am, my sincere apologies, okay? So there we go, yeah. That made a little bit of a difference, okay? And so then I'm gonna just go into that stuffing and out the back somewhere. Just like that. I'm gonna tie off a knot. And another one. You don't even see it because it just blends right in with your white snowman, okay? Except for if you get a loop like what I just did, but I'm just gonna cut it off because it's okay. Um, I'm gonna thread this in through, pull it out, cut it off, and there you have it. I'm going to put those aside. You're going to take a long strand of orange, long only because it's just easier to work with. Okay, put that on there. This is all I've got. I'm going to go up in the back. I'm going to come into that middle row that I put in between the eyes, and I'm going to go up into that stitch that's right even with the eyes. Or a little bit lower. I'm going to pull it up just so there's enough to tie off here. So I'm going to just leave a little end. And I'm going to go down into that next stitch. And then I'm going to come up, go underneath that stuffing. And I'm going to come up right beside this stitch. Not in the same, in the same hole almost, but right beside it, okay? I want to go even further down. Just like that. Pull that through. Just like that, okay? Now you're going to go into the same place there because then that just makes this one, oops, I've got a little strand that's stuck in there. I'm gonna go through that. Okay, so then you have a little bit wider of a strand there, of a piece there, and you're gonna have the point and it looks like a carrot. So into that point, out the back where you went in, don't pull too tight because then you will you will um, compromise the look of your stitches. I don't like that little white thing. And I don't want this to cross over, so I'm going to pay attention to that detail. There we go. It's perfect. Okay, now I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to tie a knot, making sure that when I tie that knot that I'm not pulling on the front. I'm just going to give it a nice tie here, and the second one will be the tighter one. I'm going to go ahead and put that onto my needle and make sure you stick with me because we are going to do the snowflakes yet okay or the the snowballs yet we're going to add snowballs to our wreath and they're so easy to make and so fun so cute back into that same hole i'm going to go up pull it out push down a little bit to cut it off take my needle and pull up on those stitches to cover that orange okay just like that and there we've got our eyes and our nose. Now what we gotta do is our mouth. So attach some black yarn to your needle. We're gonna just do one strand for the mouth so it's very, very quick. We're going to come up on the side again, match it with the corner of the mouth, or of the nose right here, okay, straight down. And then I'm gonna go just over at an angle and I'm going to have to go into my stuffing because that's um that's all I've got to work with here, okay? So I'm going to go into my stuffing or into split that stitch there and that will hold it a little bit better and go into there and come out in the same spot, spot I went in. Okay? Just like that. And then pull it. Ay, 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 why am I having problems here? Just like that. And you've got your little nose and your mouth and your eyes. Now, this is the, the eighth one that I've done, and it's the worst one that I've done. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Um, I don't know. I'm having problems with this little guy, but he's fighting me. Um, but it still looks adorable. There you go. You know, he's unique. He's so cute. Let me then cut this off. We're going to tie it and hide it the same way, and I'm going to show you all the other ones, okay? All right, there they are. <laughs> Now, this one is the one that I used with, with um, 
craft smart yarn so i told you that it's a little bit thicker and you can see the difference let me i think that one was craft smart yarn too i ran out and that's why i started using the other but you can see you can see where the difference is it's a little bit there's much more holes in in the bernat premium because it's a softer yarn but on the wreath i'm telling you because i i already had set these up and it looks beautiful so there you go you're gonna make four in one color i made four in red and I made four in green. So I have eight in total. So go ahead and finish those all up and then we will make the snowmen to get, or the snowballs together, okay? We are going to um, grab our 12 peg loom. Of course, we are going to put our anchor peg, attach our little slip knot to our anchor peg. Then you are going to um, drawstring cast on. I'm just gonna start it off with you. Drawstring cast on. Just like that, push them down. Behind peg one, all the way around. Knit off every one that has two. We've done this before, so I'm just doing this really quickly. Knit off every one that has two. And then you're going to e-wrap five rows, okay? You're gonna e-wrap five rows, and then you're gonna cast off the same way let me just finish this one the same way that we have been doing all along okay so that's my cast on now I'm going to e-wrap for five rows doing my e-wrap oops this way okay so five rows of e-wrap then you're going to cast off just like we've cast off every other piece you're going to make for every set of three so here's here's two that are five rows and this one is seven rows okay so for every set of three, you're going to do two that are five rows and two that are, and one that is seven rows. Okay. And I have three sets of these. Okay. I might do four actually. Um, they're very, very fast to do, but, um, once you get some with five rows and one with seven rows, come back and see me and I'll show you how we finish them off. Okay. All right. So here's my five and here's my seven. Let's start with the five. Okay. We're going to smooth out that top again. And we're going to reinforce it around just like what we've been doing this one you you know you just you don't even really have to do this but i'm always a stickler for for just making sure that nothing comes undone um but these are so small and they're going to be on a wreath they're not going to be played with so you really could have just knotted it off and gone through the center like that now you're gonna do the other side okay smooth that out pull it tight making sure that this end is out okay and you're going to go around just like that and you're you got a flat pancake, kind of a <laughs> flat round piece, okay? You're going to knot this off. You're going to take both of these strands, okay? And you're going to tie a knot. What that does is when you tie it really tight, is it brings this one side up to the close to this side and you've got a total flat pancake, just like that, okay? You're going to, a uh, flat circle, you're going to tie a second knot you're going to cut short the one strand you're going to take the other strand this is what you're going to going to do with your bigger one too but there's one more step with the bigger one than what we're going to do here so you're going to stick with me um, after we're done this one for the one that's seven rows you're going to trail this up to the side just like this you're going to tie off a knot the reason why you tie a knot is because once we start gathering the so around the outside here, I don't want it to gather in here. So this knot will secure that and make that um, so it doesn't happen. Then you're going to just gather along the top, just like this, all the way around. Just going over and under, over and under, over and under. And you don't even have to pay attention to rows. You just do it. It's just a small little piece, okay? Over and under, over and under till you get to the beginning. Then you're going to stick your thumb in there, rotate it around to just make it nice and smooth. Then you're going to pull this tight and you're going to go around your circle.
There we go. And reinforce it. I'm going to just do a little bit more. Okay, just like that. Then you're going to go ahead and you're going to tie that one off. Make a second knot. Okay. And you have one little snowball. Isn't that cute? <laughs> Leave that tail long because you're going to use it. Now you're going to go ahead and you're going to do the same thing with this one. Okay. Reinforce this, bring it through, tie this one, reinforce it, um, and then come back and see me. All right, so we have our little circle here. Um, I've tied a tight knot so that the both sides are up nice and close to each other. We're going to trail this up. Tie our knot. And we're going to gather around this one too. Now this one, because it's got more rows, two more rows, it's a bit bigger. And so it needs to have some stuffing. So we're going to go around just like this. Top row. Till we get to the beginning, right there. Take your thumb, smooth this all out on the inside. You want to make sure that you have a nice smooth piece. Um, again, attention to detail always makes a difference. You're going to take some of your stuffing. You're going to poke that in. It's hard to do because it's such a small piece, but you use your thumbs and you just push that into there. Just like that. And looked like a lot, but you know what? It takes very little, but more than what you think it's going to take. Okay? I'm just going to Compact that with my thumb, just like that. Look at that, I got all of that in there. <laughs> and now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna just cut this off a little bit. It's just a little too long getting in my way, okay? And now we're gonna go around that first row of stitches. Just like that, tuck that in with my finger. And pull. Be hard to find that one row but you got it just like that okay and maybe reinforce it twice go around one more time because this is pretty full but it's beautiful okay and for every cluster of snowballs you are going to have one of these big ones tie a knot and two of the small ones okay so there we go We've got our big one and we've got two small ones and that is how I'm going to place them on my wreath or however you want to place them. You can stagger them individually, however you want to do it, but that's two different sizes for you right there. And of course you have the option to make them as big or as small as you want. This is probably the smallest you want to make, but you can go up two rows and, and make it even bigger if you want or, or even much bigger than that. But go ahead and make your clusters of snowballs and when you're done that, we will meet back again. All right, my friends, I'm sorry you see the legs on my on my camera stand here, but I <laughs> I love this project. Seriously. Again, I'm trying to get over the fact that I can see the stuffing through these little little pieces, but you know what? When it's on here, don't you agree? It just looks beautiful. Again, um use a thicker yarn though if you can, and I'm going to I mentioned that at the beginning of the video too. But I just spaced these all out beautifully. I bought this wreath with the lights at a secondhand store for five bucks, okay? And then I went and I bought a long garland. This is probably about a six foot garland. Um, and I bought it because it was $4 and it has acorns and, and red cherries and all kinds of stuff with cranberries on there. I'm gonna take those off. I'm gonna cut them off because I couldn't buy them um, without buying bigger packages that would have cost more. I'm gonna take them off and I'm gonna glue gun them. My glue gun's there. It's uh, getting all nice and hot. I bought these. Aren't these absolutely gorgeous? I bought them at the same thrift shop. shop. They had a Christmas section and I went nuts. Let me open these for you. I didn't go nuts, but I had this project in mind and I went looking for things I could buy that would go on it. These were $2. Like these are, these are like gorgeous. Green and there's red there. I'm gonna leave these gold things on and I'm gonna just glue gun them in there because I like the I like the gold 
I'm showing there as well. And there's some, this color, they are absolutely gorgeous. And then, I'm not done. In that same store, somebody had donated these and they were a buck each. Merry and bright, Merry Christmas, Merry and bright there. I'm going to hang one from the center there. Either that or I also bought this little stand here for 75 cents. It's like this, okay? But I can pull it apart and then I can detail some words on there. It says Merry Christmas or whatever I want. I can glue gun that in there too. That's another option. So you will have seen at the beginning what I chose to do, um, but I have a decision to make because I love them all, okay? But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to, I'm just gonna glue gun these on, okay? Because I'm not gonna take this apart. I love this and um, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna hang it because I think it's gorgeous actually. Um, and I'm just so, so thrilled with it. So I, you can tie them on if you like, um, put a string around the back here and tie them onto your wreath if you think you're going to take them off ever. But I got this wreath, wreath for five bucks with the lights on it. I am not taking it off. I'll donate it to, to some, to a senior's home or something if I choose, I don't want it, but I might do that anyways, because it's just so, so happy. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, um, assemble this, put all my little pieces on and, uh, I'm gonna have so much fun doing it. So I hope you enjoy it as well. I don't need to stay on camera to do that, um, but I will be right back with the finished pro product, okay? <laughs> okay, you guys, I'm popping on because this might be one of the funnest projects I've done to date. <laughs> okay, so I'm sewing my, I'm gluing my snowballs on and I um, shut the light off in here so you could see the lights, but all I'm doing, I cut off the, the ends and I, the tails and I'm just putting a, of glue there it's in between these two so i'm going to miss this one i'm going to go in between this one okay and i'm going to put it right there then i'm going to take a little one that was one of the bigger ones i'm going to take the little one put a bead of glue and i'm going to just stick it on right close take the third one can't see what i'm doing because it's dark in here and i'm going to just stick it on like that <laughs> so i have them in I've got one, then I'm missing one. Got one, missing one, got one, missing one. And I'm going to go around like that, which means I have to go make two more little ones because I have one extra big one. Um, so miss this one, go there. I got to go make two little ones. And then I'm going to continue adding stuff. I love this. All right, friends. So there it is. I'm so happy with it. I've got my little Marion bright that hangs from the top there and it looks great. I went and I added some gold ribbon. I had some Christmas ribbon. So I intertwined that around... Um, each section as well and I just am so very happy with it. Here is the finished project and I couldn't be happier. I hope you love it my friends and that you make one. Please be sure to show me in my Facebook group. I would love to see your creativity um, in making a wreath. Uh, that's that's along these guidelines. So please, please, please show me in my Facebook group. I'll put the link in the description box below. All right. So thanks again for joining me. Please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Those are two things that um, if you did, I would really, really appreciate it. Okay. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next video.